Hi everyone, today I will talk about reading pictures. Photographs taken during field work have contextual value in ethnographic research and they can be used to recall, contextualize and validate ethnographic data. The pictorial representations of activities and social interactions, they can provide us with a sensory experience both during and after the field work. I had interesting encounters with children and families during my ethnographic research on the social value of the child in Punjab. Some of these encounters were also photographed. My experience reading pictures after field work was two-folded. First, the picture's explicitly visible content served as retrieval cues to recall the social interaction and encounters. And second, there are underlying implicit details uh, that can provide the theoretical understanding of the picture's content. In this regard, I attempted to systemize my post-fieldwork field work picture reading activity. I have five steps and I name this technique as CEPC, which stands for see, ask, find, see, and interpret. Here I elaborate this process by using my participation in a doll's marriage as an example. The first step is obviously to see the image and that is about observation and then we can collect the visible content. For example, see these two pictures that I look while attending the doll's marriage. These pictures shown here, they present the physical setting of a doll's marriage. Following the first step C of the CFC picture reading technique, I will describe the pictures. In these pictures, I pay attention to the content details and identify the objects, people and setting. I can divide the content of the picture into four major categories. First, dolls and related items like clothing, bed, kitchen, utens utensils, jewelry box, gift money. Second, food, snacks, sweets that will be served to the guest. Third, decoration, flowers, printed floor mat and, and a trophy. And then four, guest. Like in this picture, the guests are children and they are in their gendered clothing. Uh, you can also see two boys uh, who are younger than the girls in this picture. To have a closer look uh, and the detail uh, regarding these pictures, you can read the article online. Uh, the reference to the article is given in the description. With these points, I describe the pictures and I will also use some of the interactions with these girls that I recalled after looking at the pictures. So I write the picture description as, by arranging their doll's marriage, the two girls sitting on the mat are imitating the traditional marriage ceremony. The size of the dolls varied significantly and the girls told me about the bride and groom dolls identifying their gendered clothing. The bride wears a piece of cloth around her head called as Dubatta in Punjabi language and dowry items uh, include uh, beds and kitchen appliances. The gift money is the money that guests gave to the bride and groom which is traditionally referred to as Salami in Punjabi wedding. Uh, food items are for the guests ceremonial feast. The printed mat is a special sitting area uh, in the gathering for the bride and the groom. For decoration, flowers were used. However, the girls were unsure whether the trophy was for decoration or a gift for the groom. Most of the guests were young girls. Not all the children are shown in this picture. Uh, there were only two young boys under the age of five. 
After looking at the picture and writing a description, I will move to second step that is about writing question and that is asking about the information uh, that requires an answer but it was not explicitly available in the picture's content. Now, after observing the picture details and describing it, I have few questions such as, how do the girls tell the difference between the bride and groom? What role does clothing play in this situation? How do the girls represent dowry customs? What significance do dowry items have in, in this case? What is gift money and how is it seen as a tradition represented by these girls in the doll's marriage? In the doll's marriage, how do the girls imitate ceremonial feast serving? Why are there only two young boys under the age of five as guests, whereas the girls are of varying ages? Now, the third step, it is called to find answers to the questions that I had. Uh, this step prompts the researcher's ethnographic reflective understanding of the social and cultural context of the fieldwork. So I recalled my fieldwork, used the cues in the picture and the questions and then reflected upon the questions to find the answers. In this short video, it is not possible to talk about all answers. However, you can read the complete article uh, online using the link given in the slides and the video description. After findings, the answers, you should see the picture again uh, in light of those answers to see how the collected information relates to the picture's content. So I proceed to the fourth step of the reading pictures, connecting the information learned from the answers with the content of the picture. This goal, the goal here is to see if the answers can help me visualize these still pictures as a social and cultural animation in which the doll's marriage is seen as a socialization practice. Because the answers are based on the researcher's reflections and primary data, this step also facilitates contextualize the picture and primary data at the same time. The last step is interpretation and it is about writing an in-depth description of the picture based on the information gathered in the first four steps. These five steps can help to read and describe a picture in its ethnographic context. For example, in the last step, I provide an interpretation of the pictures that reflects on the doll's marriage as a social and cultural construction of childhood knowledge and learning. Based on the information presented above, and uh, collected through the first four steps of SEPSI, I interpret doll's marriage in the Punjab uh, and in Punjabi social and cultural context. Again, you can read the last step, uh, I mean interpretation of these pictures in my online article. SEPSI was used to read and describe pictures from my fieldwork. Unlike visual anthropology, these pictures were not used as primary data in my research. However, SEPSI was an interesting picture reading process for three main reasons. First, I was able to recall fieldwork memories associated with the picture. As a result, the content of the picture after, after the fieldwork was providing retrieval cues. Second, my attempts to ask and find were beneficial in learning the symbolic manifestation of the content in its social and cultural context. And third, the interpretation section assisted me in contextualizing my primary data collected through interviews, informal conversations, and field notes. However, I must say uh, there is a limitation to using this technique to read pictures. The pictures I read and described were taken during the fieldwork and I took these pictures myself. These pictures include not only the content but also the context of the picture. 
I am curious to see if CFC can be used to read pictures that the researcher uh, did not take during field work. Uh, I hope you will enjoy reading the article and this video will help you to read your picture data. Uh, thank you and subscribe to my channel for more videos.